In this episode of Trekking Through Compliance, we take up the episode, The Paradise Syndrome. Compliance, the final frontier. Tom Fox is the voyager of Trekking Through Compliance. His mission? To explore the original series and seek out and share what it can teach you about compliance. Here's your host, Tom Fox. Trekking Through Compliance, Episode 54, The Paradise Syndrome. In this episode of Trekking Through Compliance, we consider the episode, The Paradise Syndrome, which aired on October 4th, 1968, and occurred on Stardate 4842.6. Story synopsis. Kirk, Spock, and McCoy beam down to a planet about to be destroyed by an asteroid as big as the Earth's moon, which is on a collision course with the planet. They have 30 minutes to investigate before they must return to the Enterprise and deflect the asteroid. They beam down in the middle of a pine forest next to a lake and rightfully wonder at the astronomical chances that another planet should have developed so similarly to Earth. They soon discover an obelisk, which is made of an alien metal resisting sensors and which is inscribed with inscrutable alien writing. Yet, in another amazing coincidence, they find the planet is inhabited by a group of American Indians consisting of Navajo, Mohican, and Delaware tribes. Kirk when Kirk returns to investigate the alien structure, he accidentally falls inside while in the process of initiating communicator contact with Scotty. Search parties and sensors scans fail to locate him, and Spock and Scott are forced to leave in order to divert the asteroid and must return for the captain later. Inside the alien structure, Kirk's memory is erased, and he can no longer remember who he is or what his instruments do. When he finds his way out of the structure, he is discovered by the Indians, leaving an offering at the temple and is taken for a god. The Indian elders are somewhat doubtful of the authenticity of Kirk's godhood and ask him to prove it. When a drowned boy is brought before the elders, Kirk practices mouth-to-mouth resuscitation and brings him back to life. Since the boy has been pronounced dead by the medicine man Salish, this is considered sufficient proof, and Salish is forced to jealously give up his medicine badge. Meanwhile, the Enterprise makes it back to the deflection point and attempts to push the asteroid off course. However, the Enterprise suffers from mechanical problems and loses power before it can sufficiently deflect the asteroid. Salish's jealousy is increased when his betrothed, Miramani, the chief's daughter, tells him she cannot marry him because she is now betrothed to the new medicine man, Kurok, the name for Kirk. She asks Kirk to set the joining day, and he, oblivious of the oncoming asteroid, settles on tomorrow. Nothing like a short uh, June to uh, June uh, romance. In short order, he gets Miramani pregnant, and he is attacked by Salish, who discovers that he bleeds and therefore cannot be a god. Kirk also discovers that the secret of the temple has been lost because Salish's father died before passing it along to his son. Meanwhile, Kirk attempts to Rather, Spock attempts to fragment the asteroid with phasers, but blows out most of Mr. Scott's circuits in the process. He then retreats in front of the asteroid, despite Scotty's pronouncement that he can do nothing to fix the damage without the help of a starbase. Spock blames himself for Kirk's marooning and the failure to destroy the asteroid and refuses to eat or sleep until he has solved the mystery of the obelisk. On the planet, the winds begin blowing fiercely and the scars begin to darken. The Indians tell him he must go to the temple and stop the natural phenomenon before the earth begins to tremble. Kirk finally agrees, but can do nothing since he does not know how to get inside. In contrast to Kirk's befuddlement, Spock discovers the symbols on the obelisk are musical notes left behind by a super race known as the Preservers. The Preservers pass the galaxy, rescuing primitive cultures in danger of extinction, and the obelisk is a giant asteroid deflector. Meanwhile, Kirk and Miramani are stoned by the Indians at the temple when Kirk is unable to get inside. McCoy and Spock beam down and frighten off the Indians, but Miramani has been mortally wounded. She uses a Vulcan mind fusion. Spock uses a Vulcan mind fusion on Kirk and manages to restore his memory. When he activates his communicator and says, Kirk Enterprise, a sliding panel opens up and grants them access to the obelisk. Inside the temple, Spock is able to read the symbols and activate the asteroid repulsion beam. So, what are the fun facts for this episode? From a comment on missionlog.com, it read, quote, 
to go into complete speculation, what if some of the preservers had stayed behind with the people they relocated? The tribe's first medicine chief would have been one of them, and the machine selectively erasing his or her memory to wipe out most things that didn't fit with the new lifestyle, but leaving the knowledge of how to operate the asteroid basher. Well, that's as good a reason as any as I can think of. Once again, we have a critique of this episode, this time coming from author David Leonard Bernardi, who said in Star Trek and History, Racing Towards a White Future, the Paradise Syndrome stereotypes Native Americans as noble savages and whites as normal and even divine. Miramani cannot figure out how to pull Kirk's shirt off as she cannot find any lacing. She is portrayed as simple-minded, not that bright, according to Bernardi. This is not the case with Kirk. Moments before, he has fashioned a lamp from an old piece of pottery and saved a boy using mouth-to-mouth resuscitation. Despite his amnesia, he is shown as naturally superior. When the natives realize that Kirk is not a god, they stone him in Miramani, and it's the local citizens who are violent in this version of the native or the noble savage stereotype. Spock and McCoy eventually intervene, but only Kirk survives. In this take on a standard white-red miscongeneration narrative, the native girl dies so that Kirk, the white male hero, isn't shown unheroically and immorally leaving her and their unborn baby behind. That's uh, quite a critique. So what are the compliance takeaways from this episode? Well, Kirk, at, Kirk as Kurok creates a remarkable experience for the uh, Indians, and it led me to think about how can you create a remarkable compliance experience? Well, I think a remarkable experience, if I can borrow from my friend Jared Morris, uh, really has four elements. One, authenticity. Two, usefulness. Three, sustainability. And four, profitability. Authenticity boils down to knowing yourself, knowing your audience, and understanding the intersection between the two. Usefulness means you give your audience useful information. Sustainability is show up, show up, show up reliably, and show up again. And profitability, of course, is using the information for profit, whether that be monetary profit or other gain. I would next like you to think about the CCO position as a compliance project sponsor. How do you get uh, a uh, life cycle, or rather, what's the life cycle of a project? Well, you have the initiation stage, the planning stage, the execution stage, and the closing stage. What is your role as the chief compliance officer or a compliance professional for um, executing projects? Uh, If you think about what you do as a chief compliance officer, project execution is really one of the top. So I would encourage you to think about project execution. You might even want to think about um, taking some uh, project management courses. They could certainly help you as a compliance professional going forward. And finally, the lesson drawn from this episode is that compliance must widen its circle. Here, Kirk uh, clearly had a circle with Miramani and her friends, but he really needed to widen his circle to convince uh, the rest of the tribe that he really could be a medicine man going forward. Of course, if he'd done that, that might have been an early end of season three, but uh, he didn't, and uh, he was stoned for his efforts. I hope you'll join me again tomorrow on Trekking Through Compliance when we review what I think is the worst TOS episode and the children shall lead. If you enjoyed this episode of Trekking Through Compliance, you can help it grow by sharing it with the biggest Trek fan you know. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.